using fiction to illuminate aspects of reality which you wouldn't be able to satisfactorily just describe as uh, you know through research methods or data collection. So I was wondering what you could say about that. Well, I do want to sharp distinction in uh, fictionalizing the truth in non-fiction. I don't don't know a sharp distinction in terms of the techniques used in both. So, you know, I know the best novelists do a hell of a lot of research for the novels, and the best non-fiction writers use fictional techniques such as building narrative suspense, delineating character. Uh, you know, the, the great new journalists of the 1960s, Don Wolf and Ray <coughs> Talese and Norman Mailer, uh, use novelistic techniques in their journalism. So there isn't such a sharp divide, but where there should be a sort of church and state separation is when you are presenting nonfiction as the truth. And then some writers have been guilty of making up scenes or rounding out scenes uh, for narrative momentum. So if you're going to do that, then there should be a note at the beginning of the book saying, you know, dear reader, I make some of this up and it's up to you to guess what I have. Um, I think that uh, readers are owed that kind of uh, uh, caveat. So um, it takes a lot more work to you gather all the data, uh, especially about uh, human beings, um, where you have a complete body of work about a person, so it, so it presents that person faithfully and accurately. Um, but I think that kind of work is worth it. Now, there's a big difference between journalism in the United States, especially writing for you know, some of the better papers and magazines, and journalism in much of the rest of the world, because here they have these creatures called fact-checkers. And I remember the first time I started writing for American magazines, you know, I'd, I'd write all this, and then a fact checker would call up and go every line of the story. And then would, you know, really put me on the witness stand. So you claim that so-and-so has said such and such, well, give me that telephone number, I'm going to find out it myself. And they do, they call up, you know, if you write for a publication like the New Yorker or the, the New York Times magazine, they will call up everybody you've quoted in the story and ask them whether the quotes are accurate. Not so with Indian publications. <laughs> um, so, but in the end, that kind of scrupulousness, I think, really uh, helps your own work. And, and you know, very often the fact checkers um, uh, catch these bloopers that I put uh, in, in my uh, articles and, and save me from myself. Um, so I think it, it really is very important to maintain, you know, in terms of what is factually accurate, that division. But it's certainly permissible, and indeed, you know, it's, it's a good thing to borrow fictional narrative techniques uh, to help with, um, you know, some momentum. And, and also, the, you know, I said in the talk that readers are encouraged to derive pleasure in the text. Um, and the problem with a lot of nonfiction is that it's really boring to read. It's, it's, it's just, um, you know, information on cities or there are all these self-help books. Um, <laughs> you know, how to lose weight while having an orgasm. <laughs> they sell well, they give you information, but you're not going to go back to them once you've got the information you, you, you get from it. Um, and I think the best non-fiction books are the ones where you go back for the pleasure of the sentences. I used to write for computer magazines for a long time. Um, when I got out of the IOIS <coughs> workshop, I went into New York, and um, nobody was going to pay me to write short stories. And I realized that if you change one letter in the Iowa Writers Workshop, which was a very prestigious writing program I went to, or thought it was prestigious, if you change one letter, it becomes the Iowa Waiters Workshop. <laughs> Um, which is an appellation far more indicative of the eventual fate of most of its graduates. <laughs> um, so I, I sought employment in, uh, I, I started out in a magazine called Land Magazine, which I first thought was about real estate, but turned out to be about something called local area networks. And I didn't know anything about computers, but 
um, the editors figured since I was Indian, computers were in my blood. <laughs> And I actually, uh, uh, I, I, wrote, I wrote a column called Dear Aunt Lanny. I was Aunt Lanny. <laughs> it was a computer humor column. Um, and I explained the uh, basic facts of computers as I learned them for myself by explaining them to my readers about the networking and so forth. Um, but in you know, these computer publications, and then I went on to something called CRN, Computer Reseller News, which was known as the National Enquirer of the Computer <laughs> and then on to data communication. So there were, you know, um, uh, magazines which, um, I mean, they, they bored the hell out of me, and, uh, but they provided a good living. So when I came back to writing about human beings, I had to learn to write all over again. And the way I did that was by reading a lot of poetry. Uh, and throughout my Bombay book, um, you know, I'd be reading all these newspapers and these statistical abstracts and government reports. And the way I kept my prose home was by reading poetry almost obsessively. There's a romantic idea about the poet or the novelist sitting and writing maybe in, you know, quill feather and an inkwell. In the end, I think it really gets or at least for me, it's, uh, uh, it's a tool. It, it helps me, when the computer is great, as in editing. In and out. Physically pastes them with tape, with fellow tape, onto the manuscript. I mean, her manuscripts look like a, a jigsaw puzzle. Um, so, you know, every writer has their own method. Um, for me, the use of a computer uh, really uh, makes it much easier to edit and it, it's a faster process than writing by hand. So, uh, as I'm thinking something, it's um, also um, much easier to just go with the flow. You know? um, although having said that, when I run out of batteries, I'm stuck. Um, and, I, and then I have to go back to uh, uh, pen and ink, providing I can read my own writing. <laughs> can you hear me on this? Oh, it's in and out. Describe events and describe things truthfully that maybe others couldn't. Um, given that, and also given how I'm glad she asked a question about computers, because you know today I think everyone would agree that in general we are a lot more connected uh, with various uh, to knowledge or information through various outlets. So we have information coming at us from many different places. Um, given what I see as your, as your desire for, for truth, uh, I'd be curious to see what your take is on how responsibly the current state of mass media is in giving truth to the people. Henry David Thoreau uh, once wrote, he writes, I read in the newspaper this morning that the magnetic telegraph is to be built connecting Maine and Texas. The question is whether Maine and Texas have anything to say to each other. <laughs> so the connectivity for its own sake is useless without the wisdom without the considered contemplation uh, of a 